In this week's screencast, we'll be adding Celery to our Quartzsite application. We're going to write a task that asynchronously sends an email when a uh, sign-up happens, as well as when it, you create a game. Um, this will cover things like RabbitMQ, how to create a background task properly, and what you should use at your results store, and things that may arise when dealing with asynchronous tasks in the back end. So let's begin. We're going to be pulling up our courtside application, as you can see here. Um, to install uh, Celery, all you do is pip install Django Celery. We're going to be using Django, so we're going to need that. So let's, we're going to go ahead and quickly set that up. Work on courtside. Gonna pip install Django Celery. While that's happening, we're gonna go in quickly ahead and edit our settings file. So as it said here, we're gonna add we're gonna add this import here in our file. And then we're going to add DJ Celery to our settings. So that's more or less what's in, it's required to install. So we're going to run make server right now. Manage the pi. Get this, the celery migrations in. Awesome. We're going to go make a run server. See the thing. It doesn't have that command, unfortunately. Um, that is a pi. Sorry. Court side. Make run server. Hopefully that works now. Nope. Still doing this. Server. Do that so it's up and running. So we have our application number running. Great. So what we want to do is when somebody logs in or signs up for the very first time, we want to send them an email. So we're going to write this into our register application, which is here. We're going to create a simple file called our tasks file. So the new file, tasks.py. We're going to save that file where the register is. Yes, we want to replace it. Okay, and all we want to do is very simply is very simply create a task. Now, so in order to understand what's going on, when you fire a task, it sends a message to our broker. The broker is the brain and the messaging center of everything, which is described here. The broker that I'm using currently is RabbitMQ. It is uh, Q, very simple. Um, you send messages to it. It will relay those messages to people who are listening. And then as they're pulled off, the message will pull it off. It will either complete the request that you asked for. So for example, if you said to add one and two, it'll go and do that and then return you the result. Now that result can be stored somewhere, or if you don't care about the result being stored somewhere, like for example, in the process of your task, you don't save it somewhere else, and you don't care about the result, then there is no need to have a result store. If you don't save the result, and you do care about it, then there is a need to have a, a result store, which stores the result of whatever task. So let's say you added one and two, it would the result would be four, and that would be stored somewhere. Now the result store, a lot of people sometimes use RabbitMQ as a result store, which is an option. And as I said, a queue is not a data store. It is just something that waits for things to get pulled off it and has a queue that lets you queue things. Um, so when you do pull it off the queue, so you can only ask for it once. So for example, let's say you add, let's say you call a task that's adding one and two, you send it, a consumer or a listener pulls it off, does the, add, does the addition in the background, and then saves that to uh, RabbitMQ, another queue. Now, the second you ask for that result, that, that result is gone. You'll need to manage it your own or pull it off yourself. 
So a result store that I recommend is Redis, is a good result store if you're gonna go that route. Most tasks that I write usually end up saving to the DB at some point, so then you can use that information in the rest of the app. It's usually updating user information or sending emails or going to gather some third-party APIs call that you need to do out of, ta out of the flow of the user and things like that. So today we're gonna be sending an email so you can you can, there's nothing really to save there, but there are some lookups that you'll need to do, and we'll go into idiosyncrasies of doing those types of things and what you need to watch out for. <clears throat> so we're looking at the new registration form. So we're gonna handle the case where the user signs up with a regular email. We're gonna clean that form. This is a old style form, which we will, we will refactor in the future, but all you need to do is that on request, if the request is a post, it initializes the form with the post data, cleans the data, creates a user object, saves that user object, creates a player object. That is the player specific details for our application, assigns the sports that we passed in, authenticates that user, logs them in, and then redirects them to their homepage. So what we wanna do is after the user signs up, we wanna send a task saying, hey, you signed up, congratulations, here's your username, here's a link to click to verify your email, for example, right? So that doing that in line in the application would slow it down because we have to establish a connection to our SMP TV server, um, get some information for the user, uh, stringify the email, strip the tags in the email for the plain text version, send the email, and return. And that's a lot for the user to have to wait for. Sometimes this can take a lot more. This would even be worse if we're sending the email to a few more users. Um, so in order to keep the app fast and and, and responsive, what we want to do is add a task task here to email user. It's very clear. That's where we'd put it. So once we understand that, we're able to move on, on to writing the task. So the task is very simple. Um, it's the function that you'd run anyways, but it is delayed, as in you de delegate that running of that code to someone else in the background. If they're not busy, it'll happen immediately. If, it, if they're busy, it'll happen when they, when they get time to run on the consumer. You can have multiple consumers based on load, but it's generally very simple. So for example, here we're gonna write up our sign up task. So we're gonna simply go from celery, dot registry, import task. And from there, we're going to go and create our subclass of the class task. So class sign up task, task. Now in Celery, it, it defines a function that you can override, which is the run class. You can provide any information that you need to provide to that function in order to run, and then it'll execute anything that's in the run task. So in this case, we wanna pass in self because we will need to have some information from there. And we're also gonna pass in the user. Um, the user that we're going to be sending an email to. So this is the user who signed up. So as you saw here in our view, we do have access to the user variable. So we're in good shape so far. Next, we're going to simply pass and create the email object. So we're going to have a subject for this email. We're going to have who it's from. We are going to have who it's to. And it's going to be something like this. So it's going to be welcome which is the subject, then it's going to be from, uh, let's say my email right now, because I don't have an email set up for this thing right now, and we're going to have it sent to user.email, which is perfect. So we have our three things there. Next, we're going to do our HTML content, which is the HTML version of this email, which will be something like this. We're gonna call a function here from Django called render to string, which allows us to take uh, HTML um, template and render to a string so we can send it as an email. That is simply from, from, from Django. Django provides a convenience method for this from Django template loader. Import render to string is what we're looking for. So 
so this provides us a function to render to string. We are then going to render to string. So the email sign up dot html and we are going to pass in a dictionary to render against so it's going to be the use the key user of the value user dot first name so we can personalize the email for that user we're then going to create some text content which is going to be the same html email but with the tags stripped so Django provides another convenience method for this. So from Django.utils.html, import strip tags. So this allows us to take uh, an email form that we've already rendered and strip away all the HTML tags so we can send a plain text email. So that would be strip tags and then whatever our HTML content was. So we'll have all the stuff that we had from before as well as minus rather the HTML abstract pieces. So we're gonna have a message here and now we're gonna get into setting up our email settings. Um, that is another thing from Django core mail. So Django core mail import email multi alternatives don't ask me about the namings, but that's what it's called. And once we have that, we can pass in declarations for those emails. So we're going to pass in the subject. We're going to pass in the text content. We're going to pass in the from email person. And we're then we're going to pass in who it's to. And here, this could be multiple people, one or many, but it has to be a list. So that's why it's put in braces, we're going to go message dot attach alternative, which is attaching the HTML version of this email. So HTML underscore content, we have to give it a type, which is text HTML so that the email renderers know how to render it. And we're going to go message dot send. And then that's our task. That was basically getting a username, rendering against an HTML template, which we have here. So if we were to just quickly look up the templates, email sign up template, all it says is hi user, you just signed up for experience of a lifetime. Da 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 da, courtside team. Very simple. All the task does is renders the user's name against that one. As you can see, as you can see here, we're looking for user, we get their first name. Um, we then render that against that. We strip things for the HTML, for the plain text content. We get an alternatives here. We attach the text HTML version if the email browser supports it. And we register our message to send. Now, once that's complete, we have to register our task. So tasks, we have to import something else from Django, or Celery rather, which we already have, which is this. It's the task registry, but we also need to import the thing for the task. I made a mistake there. I thought that was for the thing. So let me just reiterate that ta the task import task. This is the subclass of the task. This is for the registry so that seller is aware of which, which classes or, or functions that needs to be able to run in the background. And then the final step is go task.register sign up task. So we fully created a end to end task. It's beautiful. Let's quickly get this running and show you how that works. So the next step is to integrate that within our view that is creating the sign up view. So we'd go from tasks import sign up task. Once we have that, we're going to scroll down to where our logic is for the login. We said this is a good spot for us to pass in the sign up task. So sign up task. We want to call that task. We want to call delay on that task. So the task is passed in there. We're going to delay it, 
meaning to defer the execution of this function to the to the consumer, the celery consumer. And we're going to pass in what we said we would pass in, which was our user object, which will allow us to render the email as well as figure out who to send it to. And that should be good to set up our, our deferred function. Now, the next portion of this is to run uh, celery D consumer. Now, <clears throat> we said we'd be running on our own machine, the RabbitMQ server. This is the RabbitMQ settings that you'll see when you run the exchange. All this does is simply connects to the RabbitMQ where we're sending the message and listens and waits for things to get popped onto the queue. When things are popped onto the queue, it has four processes that it that can consume from the queue. One of them will pick it up and run our, our desired task. Since our particular task doesn't return anything, it's just going to be a no op. It's going to do the email sending and then return nothing. And this is how you start it. There are a few errors or warnings up here saying that the way I have declared the broker is going to be deprecated, but that's completely fine. Um, and it's up and running. So all we have to do now is simply sign up. So we're going to log out of here. I'm going to go to our main page. We're going to go, oh, hey, great site. We're going to go and put in our email. It's going to take us to another page where it asks us for a username. We're going to call mUsuf31 because I know that mUsuf3 is from my username. We're going to go Mahdi. Last name is Yusuf. We're going to put a password of 1212. We're going to go, we like hockey and we like baseball and we like basketball. We're going to say I'm a male. And we're going to submit. This is just to redirect the redirect us to the home page again. And as you can see, it's our, our user page with all the information populated. And as you can see here, you've gotten an email saying, hey, Mahdi, you just signed up for experience of a lifetime. Check out your game here. This is your email. Great. So that's all the stuff that you need to create a deferred task in Python. So you noticed the difference and the speed of which the, the, the next page load. It was just a simple call saying, hey, run this. And then it moved on and logged us in and we were able to continue execution. Nothing happened here because our our function didn't return anything or didn't print anything. But if you were to print anything in here, it would show up here or return something. It would say task completed with result blah. Um, things to note moving forward. And I'll leave this for another screencast. What would happen if the user object was changed between now and when the actual task run? Remember that these tasks are getting put in a queue and sometime in the future, Maybe pull, maybe they may be called upon. We'll leave that as a task for the next week's screencast. This concludes our introductory talk on Celery.